Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about the Hubble Telescope once again, because as you can probably tell from the title, we finally have some good news about the possibility of this telescope functioning for many years to come. Because it looks like after a month of struggle, the brilliant NASA scientists and engineers were able to finally figure out what was wrong with the telescope and seem to have potentially fixed it once and for all. Or at least it looks this way based on some of the recent announcements. Which also means they successfully identified the main culprit, the main issue on the telescope. And even though initially it was thought to be the problem with computers, it turns out to be, just as predicted, something to do with the power relay. And this is of course incredible news because having lost the Arecibo Observatory, it would have been really devastating to lose the telescope that was able to take some of the most iconic images while also making some of the most incredible scientific discoveries. This video right here, for example, shows us the iconic image known as the Ultra Deep Field. But, as I mentioned in a previous video about Hubble, unfortunately, back on June 13th, the telescope had to be taken offline simply because the computers on the Hubble telescope were constantly reporting a lot of errors and a lot of mistakes. And so for over a month now, a lot of different diagnostic tests had to be run, trying to enable and disable certain parts of the telescope, while also trying to figure out exactly what was causing these issues. But since the NASA engineers realized pretty quickly that both the main computer and also the backup computer were actually producing exactly the same mistakes, this led to a conclusion that it wasn't really the computer's fault. It was very difficult to explain how both computers would produce the same mistake. It must have been something else, something that could possibly affect the computers equally, which led the NASA engineers to conclude that it was very likely something to do with the power generator or the power regulator located on the telescope. But since the telescope has not received any upgrades or any repairs since 2009, since the last shuttle mission, the actual problem could have been caused by many different parts. And so pretty much on a daily basis, the NASA engineers were trying to figure out exactly where the problem was coming from. And turns out the main culprit behind the problem was something known as the PCU, the part that sort of looks like this. And this is a part that you can find in the Smithsonian Museum where this picture is from and represents a kind of a power relay station for the telescope, mostly because the entire electrical system inside the telescope really depends on three main parts. We have the solar panels to collect the energy, we have the batteries to store the energy, and then we have the PCU to distribute the energy to different parts. And so this power control unit is essentially where the problem was. And it's not really that surprising, this part has already broken down back in the late 90s and was originally replaced during the servicing mission 3B back in 2002. And so since then, the telescope has been operating using the same part, but chances of it failing are actually pretty high. None of these parts are expected to survive for over a decade in these conditions. But luckily, because of the original design and because of the idea of modularity of the telescope, every single part on the telescope has a backup, including this power control unit as well. Now, interestingly, during the original replacement of the PCU back in 2002, the entire telescope was shut down for over 6 hours. And so, something similar had to be done right now, but instead of the actual part being replaced completely, it was more of a redistribution of everything from the main uh, PCU to the backup PCU. And this was the most nerve-wracking part of this entire process. Especially because this unit is really important. As you can see from the variety of different connections and cables here, this unit is linked to a lot of different components on the telescope. And so many different components, including the science components, the command components, the data handling components, all of them had to be switched at the same time from the main PCU to the backup PCU. Which unfortunately also means that now there is no more backup. If anything still fails in the next few years, well, chances are there is going to be almost no way to repair the telescope then. As I mentioned in the previous video, there is currently no way for NASA to get to the telescope and to try to use human crew to maybe repair it somehow. And we also don't really have any robotic missions that are capable of doing this either. But because this was such a nerve-wracking process, the NASA engineers decided to double-check and triple-check absolutely everything. They decided to take it really, really slow and to only start the repair operations if everything was confirmed using the variety of trainer parts that are currently available on Earth as well. As a matter of fact, this right here is one of these trainer parts that is currently in a museum. So many of these parts were previously used to train astronauts in order to service the telescope 
and know exactly where each of the parts is located and how it looks. And so that's sort of what the scientists had to do here on Earth as well. They had to make sure that all of this would work in a real telescope by trying it with various model parts first. But the thing is, they've already done similar operations in the past, specifically back in 2008, and even back then the engineers switched to some of the redundant parts before the final servicing mission could be launched to repair what was broken. And so this is definitely not the first time they had to do something like this. But chances are this might be the last time. There are no more backup parts, at least for the power unit, and there are also very few options left if something does break after all. But on July 15th, nevertheless, they were able to successfully switch to the backup parts, which included switching to the backups of the power control unit and also the backup of the science data and the command unit slash science data formatting unit, the parts that are directly dependent on the power unit itself. And once everything was sort of rebooted, the engineers started to slowly bring up each of the parts back to their original normal operation mode that's usually used during the science acquisition stage. And so far, as of a few hours ago, looks like everything seems to be going just fine. All of the parts so far, all of the essential parts, have so far recovered and have been sending correct signals. But naturally it might take a few more days before we know for sure if everything is indeed working as expected. And hopefully within a week or so, once the calibration is complete, the telescope will return back to taking incredible photos and conducting a lot of interesting scientific missions. For now though, we can only cross our fingers and hope that everything worked. But the question is of course, what happens when something else fails? Well, hopefully by then we'll find a way to somehow repair the telescope, or at least find a robotic mission that can repair the telescope safely without the use of the actual astronauts. On the other hand, hopefully when the failure happens, the other telescopes, such as James Webb or the uh, Nancy Grace Roman telescopes, are already operational and are already conducting scientific missions. So in other words, let's hope that it survives for a few more years, maybe a decade. But since a lot of these parts are over 30 years old now, it's really difficult to predict what exactly is going to cause the next problem. It could come from pretty much anywhere. But I guess for now, well, first of all, congratulations to all of the NASA scientists and engineers. But second of all, let's hope that everything does go as planned and in a few weeks from now, we do hear and see more of images from Hubble. But until then, well, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.